And this is still a very active rescue and recovery mission here this morning. Here's the best view we can get you of what remains of the bridge right now. Governor Moore says those six people are construction workers who were patching potholes on the bridge at the time of the collapse. They were not doing structural work. Uh, there is no view of the boat, as uh, we heard from Alexa, but you can see just a stunning image of this bridge collapse here from our advantage. We know two people have been rescued. One is in shock trauma and serious condition, and the other amazingly okay, even refused medical help after they were rescued. Officials initially said that several cars were on the bridge when the call came in at 1.30 after the cargo ship collided uh, with the bridge, but now they're not saying whether or not drivers are trapped in their cars in the water, and if they're searching for them. Governor Moore saying many cars were stopped at the bridge entrance ahead of time. Now, Coast Guard cutters and aviation assets, many helicopters have been flying around. They are part of this rescue and recovery response. The FBI and Governor Moore reiterating this is not a terrorist attack. There have been no credible threats made. And as for that ship, we know it notified authorities of a power issue that they lost power prior to the collision. And you can see the lights go out in the video. The cargo ship apparently was coming in uh, at what officials earlier called a rapid speed of eight knots. But again, because they were able to alert uh, of that electrical outage, cars were able to be stopped down here. Now, many federal and local gov government entities are working together on this. And we want to turn the camera around here and show you there's a lot of media here as well. This has, of course, attracted attention uh, statewide, this tragedy and the scope of it that large. Many, many uh, reporters and cameras and different outlets out here waiting right now for that upcoming press conference. A state of emergency has been declared and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg uh, says emergency response funds, of course this is going to take a lot of that to fix, should be released rather quickly and of course we are waiting to hear from President Biden uh, very shortly, uh, any time now. This bridge has been open since 1977. It's over a mile and a half long and it's a major, major route for so many people. Uh, in this area. So, of course, there are many implications, <clears throat> excuse me, of this collapse. Again, they're searching for six people, six construction workers right now to rescue. But the big question is if cars were on the bridge at the time, those responses uh, that we heard on the scanner are saying that there were several cars and trucks on the bridge at the time of the collapse and that the sonar even detected them in the water. But officials remaining very tight lipped as to uh, if they are searching for them at this time. So that's a big question that we will have at that next press conference that we're waiting uh, from the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB. We are expecting to hear from them. It was supposed to be right around now at noon, but because of uh, the White House, they pushed it till one o'clock. So we will bring that to you live uh, and have more answers to your questions around one o'clock. Reporting live, Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News. All right, Maxine, thank you. We are getting a statement from the shipping giant that chartered the vessel this morning. They are saying due to the damage to the bridge and resulting debris, it will not be possible to reach that specific port of Baltimore for the time being. In line with this, we are omitting Baltimore on all our services for the foreseeable future until it is deemed safe for passage through this area. Wow, a lot of people are reacting to this, uh, as we see here in our newsroom. But first and foremost, this morning, President Biden saying he's convening with senior members of his team as we wait for a briefing from him. He, they've directed every federal resource to be available to help with efforts in this. We know there's been a lot of conversation between the governor and Pete Buttigieg this morning. But another view here of the Dolly, the ship that collided with this Francis Scott Key Bridge early this morning. Close up, you can see uh, just the metal frame splaying over the ship here into the water as crews continue to search for who possibly remains inside the water. Another a statement coming out from Lamar Jackson for the people and their families that, that were a part of the collapsing bridge in Baltimore. My heart, thoughts and prayers go out to you all. Another one here from RG3, prayers for Baltimore. Uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed with cars and people on it after being hit by container ship overnight. Still working to get the latest information on the people who were potentially in those cars. We will keep you updated as reaction comes in here for the newsroom. All right, Taylor, the 695 Francis Scott Key Bridge over the Patapsco River spanned 1.6 miles. Construction began in 1972, and the bridge opened in March of 1977. Scholars believe the span crosses within 100 yards of the site where Francis Scott Key himself witnessed the bombardment 
of Fort McHenry on the evening of September 12, 1814. That battle inspired Key to write the words of the Star Spangled Banner. Well, now to our Lens Stoller Traffic Network here. We are expecting some, some major issues as a result of this. We are also getting some other issues out on the roads. You can see those indicated on the, the map right here. So keep that in mind for, for those folks still traveling here at the lunch hour. Now, if you usually take the Key Bridge, where most of our attention has been directed here this morning for your commute home from work, you will need to find a new route this evening. The Baltimore Harbor Tunnel, maybe the Fort McHenry Tunnel, those are the best alternate ways to get across the Patapsco River. Just be mindful, there could be more people than usual likely on that same route now. Here's the Maryland Secretary of Transportation on what you can do to work around the collapse. Avoid I-695 Southeast Carter and use I-95 I and I-895 as alternatives. I-695 is being detoured southbound at exit 43, the Peninsula Expressway, and northbound at exit 2, Route 10. Vessel traffic into and out of the port of Baltimore suspended until further notice, but the port is still open for truck trans, trans, transactions. It's been a cloudy start to the day and temperatures now slowly starting to rise. 51 over Towson and mostly cloudy. Winds at this time light. Around the rest of the state, we're seeing temperatures in the 40s and the 50s. Clouds are going to linger throughout the day, and this is all ahead of our next weather maker. That system will bring rain to the state starting tomorrow. You can already see a little bit farther to our west. That's where we're tracking those showers. This line of rain will be heading our way tonight. Coming up, we'll have a closer look at the timing of the rain, and I'll also let you know how it looks as we approach opening day and Easter in my weather authority forecast. Back to you. All right, Jasmine, thank you. And stay with Fox 45. We have exclusive live team coverage all afternoon. Now, all morning we've been live on the scene, and we will continue to bring you updates of this devastating collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Some live images right now for you. You can see this devastating scene. Stay with us. We'll have more information. The crew that was out there working was basically repairing potholes, just so you understand that had nothing to do with a structural issue at all at the, at the, in the facility. Um, at this time, one person has been uh, rescued and so far, and our, continue, our efforts continue in, in terms of that. Our breaking news coverage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse continues here. The bridge fell into the water early this morning after a cargo ship crashed into it. We are learning now that the crew of that ship reported a power issue before the crash. Eight construction workers were fixing potholes on the bridge when it fell. Two members of that crew have been rescued, but six they remain unaccounted for, missing. One of those workers that was pulled from the water is in serious condition here. Let's take a look at the timeline of this crash and a minute-by-minute minute breakdown. It all started at 12.28 this morning. The Dolly container ship departs from the port and begins to move. Then at 1.24, the Dolly lights flicker, traveling down the Patapsco River. At 126, lights continue to flicker as the ship begins to change course toward the key bridge's pillar. At 127, the ship hits the key bridge. By 150, first fire crews arrive on scene reporting a complete collapse of the bridge. Still, right now, crews remain searching for victims who are in the water.
Governor Westmore declaring a state of emergency here in Maryland. He says the declaration will allow the state to access federal funds to help with the emergency response. He says not only are local, state, local and state emergency crews working rapidly, but his office is also in communication with the feds, including U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. We also know the FBI is involved in the emergency response. In fact, earlier this morning, we spoke with former FBI agent Dr. Tyrone Powers about that response. If there's a civil lining to what's going on right now, it's that post 9-11 and the terrorist attack, all the agencies have kind of fused their efforts. That's why you saw the massive response and how quickly they responded. So the FBI are watching the waterways, the airways, because we're always on the alert for terrorist incidents. Homeland Security are always watching these incidents. So wherever they occur, whenever they occur and wherever they occur, uh, they're ready to for a, a coordinated effort to go make sure there isn't terrorism, to get rescue people out there. They've also been multi-jurisdictional training. So when you see Baltimore County and Baltimore City and Anne Arundel County and the Coast Guard come together so quickly and there's no conversation about who's in charge of what, who's handling what, it is because we have kind of prepared ourselves for this kind of situation, thinking that there may be some kind of terrorist attack on the waterways or in the so airways. Dr. And that's Powers. why you can move out so quickly. All right, here's another live look at the scene as we're learning that Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott has declared a local state of emergency. The bridge that had been over the water for more than 40 years and providing a key shipping route for the city is now gone. Earlier this morning, associate teaching professor at Johns Hopkins University, Rachel Sangre, spoke to the bridge and its structure on Fox 45 Morning News. I don't believe the age has uh, anything to do with it. What happens next is sort of a, a systems engineering problem, right? Um, the, the, aside from the uh, search and rescue, thinking about how to, um, you know, manage uh, traffic in and out of the Port of Baltimore and uh, around the Beltway uh, of Baltimore. Um, you know, the 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 bridge collapse. Um, you know, I don't believe was a function of its age, but uh, maybe your your viewers would be interested to <clears throat> hear um, that the bridge was a, a three span continuous um, uh, truss bridge. Um, so when one of those piers was um, w was hit, uh, was removed, uh, that means that um, uh, because the bridge was three spans continuous, um, all of the members were connected together. Um, and so what that does is that enables us to have a longer uh, span in the middle of the bridge to uh, allow cargo ships to pass through um, without significant, um, without more significant stress um, on the bridge members. Uh, so when one of those piers was removed, um, all three of those spans uh, came down. Incredible when you look at those images there. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens have released a statement thanking first responders and local leaders for taking action on the scene earlier this morning and are praying for all of the families who were impacted by this tragic event. All right, let's get with meteorologist Jasmine Lomax with a look at your forecast right now for us, Jasmine. Thanks, Mackenzie and Megan. We are looking at temperatures now mostly in the 50s across the state. We're going to stay just a couple degrees below average as the afternoon continues, and those clouds are going to linger around much of the state. This is all ahead of our next weather maker. Now this afternoon, again, we do stay dry as temperatures rise to the low to mid 50s. Then tomorrow we get ready for that next system and taking a wider look. You can see the rain that we're tracking as it continues to push toward the east. This is what's on our way ahead of a pair of fronts. This will lead to rain tomorrow morning. So this afternoon, notice on the future scan, the clouds remain. Then overnight, possibly an isolated shower, but a lot of that rain starts to move in around daybreak. Six, seven, eight o'clock, we're tracking scattered showers. Then as we head into the afternoon, a lot of that rain pushes over toward the eastern shore. We'll stay mostly cloudy around the Baltimore area, but more rain will follow on Thursday. We wake up to widespread rain, moderate and possibly some heavy rain at times. Then later into the afternoon, the heavy rain tapers, but there is the chance for a couple of stray showers around three o'clock, right around first pitch for opening day. So this could have impacts on that. But as we continue throughout the evening and overnight, we'll dry out.
and looks much better on Friday. We're talking sunshine and higher temperatures reaching the 60s. So again this afternoon our highs will reach the low to mid 50s staying below average with mostly cloudy skies. This is followed by the chance for rain tomorrow. We'll start the morning with scattered showers then into the afternoon that rain pushes toward the eastern shore. We'll start to dry out into the evening 55 for the high temperature. Rain returns on Thursday. We're waking up to widespread rain by the afternoon, possibly a few stray showers with impacts possible to opening day 58 for the high temperature. We'll return to a dry pattern for the weekend 61 on Friday with a mix of sunshine and clouds 64 on Saturday, then on Easter Sunday 65 with partly cloudy skies. After that, more clouds move in on Monday with highs staying in the mid 60s. Back to you. Kevin, thank you and stay with Fox 45. We have exclusive live team coverage continuing this afternoon with crews on the scene on both sides of the bridge. Here's another live look at the collapse. You can see the devastation. We hope to learn more information as more news conferences, including President Joe Biden, expected to speak within the hour. I can. Yes. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath, but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. All of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you and we will. Our breaking news right there happening as we speak a major rescue operation underway after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Yeah, the collapse sending the bridge down into the Patapsco River. Let's take another live look right now at where the bridge would be if it were still standing. You could see it right there. Now this collapse happening overnight throughout the morning and into this afternoon. We've gotten a better look at the scene and the massive rescue operation that is now underway. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. So here's what we know right now. We know emergency crews believe that there were at least eight people who fell into the water after that collapse. We're told two people have been pulled from the water, one of them incredibly 
was not hurt, actually refused medical treatment. The other was taken to the hospital in very serious condition. There are six, however, that remain unaccounted for still at this hour, believed to be construction workers that were on the bridge repairing potholes at the time. Now, what remains unclear is how many cars might have been on the bridge at the time of the collapse. We did get earlier reports from officials that sonar detected vehicles underwater. All of that remains under investigation. Like you said, unbelievable. I mean, in shock, really. I yeah, mean, it, it, it's, it's like, is this a movie? Right, right. Um, and whatnot. I mean, it's, like I say, it's a major artery and it's, it's really gonna affect not only traffic, but the port. We were awakened with uh, what appeared to be an earthquake and a, lo a long rolling uh, sound of thunder. Wow. So uh, we woke up and literally we can look right out of our bedroom window and see the key bridge. But I couldn't see anything because of the darkness. And a little bit later, I got up again to check and I saw some emergency lights in the area. And now we're getting a statement from the shipping giant that chartered the vessel. In a statement this morning, the company says, quote, Due to the damage to the bridge and resulting debris, it will not be possible to reach the Port of Baltimore for the time being. They went on to say, in line with this, we are omitting Baltimore on all our services for the foreseeable future until it is deemed safe for passage through the area. Right now, we want to take you live to the White House. Actually, this is our Baltimore Harbor camera, but we are keeping an eye on the White House as well as we are waiting to hear. There it is from President Joe Biden. He is expected to speak any minute now on the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. We're going to hear from him. Uh, and when we do, we will take you there live and listen in as he begins. Live from WBFF-TV in Baltimore, this is Breaking News. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. 
Maryland waking up to devastating images this morning. The Francis Scott Key Bridge struck by a cargo ship and collapsing. At the time, pictures showed the bridge almost completely submerged in water of the Patapsco River. And as we continue our live coverage, we've continued to get a better indication and a clearer picture of the extent of the damage. Taking some live looks, just look at this. This is an indication of, of what it looks like right now. Surreal when you look at it in, in the light of day. This is what we know right now. This is the very latest here. Emergency crews right now are searching for six people in the water this afternoon. At least eight members of a construction crew were working on the bridge when it fell. We know two of them have been pulled from the water. One, incredibly was not hurt, actually refused medical treatment. The other was taken to the hospital in very serious condition. The governor says crews on the boat reported a power issue ahead of the crash, allowing emergency responders to limit the number of cars that were on the bridge at the time. Those in the area, they are just in complete disbelief, shock at what they're seeing that's left. I was in disbelief. I, I couldn't believe it. It was happening. Um, I thought I was in a dream, really. Uh, we were awakened with uh, what appeared to be an earthquake and a, lo a long rolling uh, sound of thunder. Wow. So uh, we woke up and literally we can look right out of our bedroom window and see the key bridge. But I couldn't see anything because of the darkness. And a little bit later, I got up again to check and I saw some emergency lights in the area and I decided to drive up because I'm the old uh, dog in chasing the fire truck. And I uh, came up here and what was in progress was a, a multi-jurisdictional response to uh, a disaster, basically. Now we're joined now by Maryland State Senator Johnny Ray Salling. Senator, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I know you represent part of this region, including parts of where this bridge once stood. Can you tell us what you first learned this morning and kind of what you know at this point? Well, thank you for this opportunity, and uh, my prayers are with all those that uh, we're still looking for and for those that are doing the work, and uh, we're praying for them now. But early this morning, about 1.30, 2 o'clock this morning, I got a couple phone calls so from the president's office and their staff and a couple other reporters, and they called, and they were just letting me know if I would heard or seen anything. And so I was, I didn't, and then all of a sudden I got a, my phone just went off, the hook like most everybody else has and uh what it was was that they were uh calling me and i was calling them back and they were telling me what happened to the key bridge and i was like in all yeah i mean the images senator are just incredible to see the collapse of this bridge into the river now I know that you represent part of this area and now we're talking about the disruption of transportation and how this is such an important route for the commuters. What can you tell us and what are you telling constituents at this point about ways to get in and out of some of this area? Well, we're going to be working what I do work with the transportation secretary in the state of Maryland part of budget and tax, and so I meet with them. I've had opportunities to talk with our director at the new director at the port, but we're gonna be meeting with them. Uh, we did have a briefing at 1130. Um, we're making sure that everybody knows the other routes and avenues that they can take between or the route going around the other opposite way of 695, 895, 95. Uh, we're working with them to make sure that they know we're having com we're going to have conversations with our constituents. And if any updates come up, we're going to make sure that they know these updates. Uh, as you know, it's going to be an ongoing investigation. Uh, it's going to be ongoing work. Uh, the Maryland is in a state of emergency. So we will be able to do uh, more with that in place and hopefully move forward quickly. But it's going to be a long haul. Yeah, a long haul indeed. And uh, you mentioned uh, the state of emergency, and we've heard several leaders, including the governor, talk about working with the federal government. I want you to stand by. We're awaiting the president to begin his remarks. So I apologize if I do have to interrupt you at some point. But when yes. it comes to working with the federal and state partners, we know the U.S. Transportation Secretary B. Buttigieg is reportedly making his way to Baltimore right now. What does it look like in terms of working with the federal government and these resources to figure out a way forward. I know the rebuilding conversation is going to take significant amount of time, but what can you tell us about the partnership and the path forward in terms of getting access to some of these areas? Well, knowing that the infrastructure money, the catastrophic money that are there at any given situation, 
if there's an emergency, which this is. So we can work with our federal partners, our state partners, myself, and our local partners with the city of Baltimore. This is something that we know that we have to move forward with. So every part is important. The burden is not just on a federal, state, or local. We're working together. And I keep on telling people this. This is not a party issue. This is a people issue. We need to move forward. We need to work together. And the only way we can do that is, is we, know, we need to know all the concerns, and we need to do it in a safe manner. We have planners. We have people that do this work. We have great workers that work locally in union and non-union with our, you know, everybody that we have in place as union for our builders and our engineers. So let's work together and get this done. The burden won't be done, won't be on one place as the state, but we'll all work together in this. Absolutely. The partnership here obviously will be critical and really the only way to bring this forward when it comes to where we stand right now with the General Assembly. I mean, we have about 10 days left of this legislative session. Do you think that there's room in the, the system or is there any conversation happening about what lawmakers can do, if anything, to help address some of the concerns while the session is underway? Well, I'm, I've talked to another senator this morning, and we're gonna, we would like to get with our president of the Senate and have an emergency bill go through and try to find some legislation to work work through this. Uh, uh, throughout this whole session, where we wanna work with Trade Point Atlantic that wants to do some uh, dredging. We know this is a deep port, and this is important that we have a deep port. A lot of other places don't have that. So we have that here. We need to move forward and go to a place where we can have more deep port and other options. This is the opportunity that we can have with Trade Point Atlantic working with the Port of Baltimore. All right, State Senator Johnny Ray Selling, thank you so much for representing that part of the region, including parts of Dundalk. I anticipate you and I will have more conversations in Annapolis once we get through this initial breaking news situation as more information develops. But we appreciate you taking the time for joining us this afternoon. Thank you very much for the opportunity and continue to pray for the people. All right, we have some continuing live team coverage now at the scene of bringing us the latest developments. Let's get right to Fox 45's Alexa Ashwell from the western side of the bridge. Alexa. Well, Mackenzie, as we've been sharing with people, officials say this is an active search and rescue. And just minutes ago, we began to hear sounds of the chopper. We're going to zoom in here, uh, presumably based on the color and my vantage point, um, uh, the, the emergency rescue chopper. This is the uh, the scene from the uh, western uh, entrance to the key bridge. You can see uh, where the uh, cargo ship sits uh, in the water, the uh, smoke billowing uh, from the uh, back end there. Uh, this is what we know. We're about 11 hours since uh, this bridge collapsed and still the images of the mangled steel. Mackenzie, a lot to take in here. Uh, we know just before 1.30, uh, we're told officials say that Mayday call came in. The ship, uh, the cargo ship, the Dolly, uh, departing the port had uh, lost power. Online records, I've been looking into it, uh, say the ship arrived here just a few days ago. Uh, on the bridge, we're told an eight-person construction crew uh, repairing potholes on the key bridge. Uh, right now, officials searching for six people. We're told one taken to uh, the hospital and one miraculously okay. Uh, again, this is the uh, vantage point from the lower half of the Patapsco River, the western entrance. Uh, as we were coming in this direction, we saw, of course, that entrance is shut down. Uh, traffic not too bad. People have been told to avoid this area. Uh, we've also been told that family has been instructed to gather at a certain location as this active search and rescue is underway. But I would say in the past 30 minutes, that is the new development that we do see uh, the chopper there flying overhead. A live look at the uh, Dolly cargo ship uh, with the uh, key bridge as it's collapsed, that mangled seal, just an, an awful image. Uh, that is the very latest that we have from this vantage point. I'm going to send it back to you guys. Alexa, and it makes you think about those families watching, waiting, praying. Yeah. We want to check in now with Maxine Stryker. She is live on the eastern side of the bridge in Dundalk. Maxine, all morning long, we saw emergency crews rushing through that very area where you're standing. What's the scene out there right now? Is there still that intense response? 
It doesn't seem to be quite as intense as we showed you earlier, and we can show you right now. The response here is a lot of media, a lot of uh, reporters, photojournalists here from around uh, the state, even some uh, foreign journalists as well. As you can see, we're setting up for a press conference. We're waiting to hear from the NTSB at 1 o'clock as that search and rescue uh, mission continues here as they begin to look for those six people. This is our vantage point uh, of the collapsed bridge here. We cannot see the ship, but we can, uh, as Alexa pointed out, we can hear, we can see those helicopters flying around uh, several areas here searching for those six construction workers who were patching potholes on the bridge at the time of the collapse. We know two people have been rescued, one of them in shock trauma, and uh, I think we've all said it, amazingly, one of them refused medical treatment um, and is doing okay, apparently. Now, uh, officials initially had told us, and this is the big question today, that several cars were on the bridge at the time of the collapse, and we can hear that confirmed in scanner audio, that there was believed to have been several cars and trucks on the bridge when it collapsed, but officials are not confirming if they uh, are, are actively searching for cars or drivers in the water this morning, only saying they're searching for those six construction uh, workers, but we do know that because the ship was able to report those electrical problems ahead of time and call that mayday, some cars were stopped here at the entrance of the bridge from going on, or there could be uh, even more people unaccounted for uh, this morning. Now, Coast Guard cutters are also in the water uh, looking for those six people this morning as the FBI and Governor Moore reiterate they don't believe this is a terrorist attack. There are no signs of any credible threats, calling this simply a very tragic accident. Uh, as for that ship, as I mentioned, we know it did notify authorities ahead of time that it was having those electrical problems. And in that stunning video, you can see the lights go out before it uh, comes in and hits that middle span of the bridge. Many federal and local government entities working together on this now. Local, uh, locally, we have Brandon Scott here this morning, County Executive uh, Johnny Oshevsky, City Council President uh, Nick Mosby and then many, many other uh, congressmen and people on the ground, as well as Governor Wes Moore and, as I mentioned, the media. Now, a state of emergency has been declared. Transportation Secretary Be Pete Buttigieg says those emergency response funds will be released rather quickly because, as we know, this is going to take days, weeks, months to clean up and, of course, a lot of money as well. We are told that Buttigieg is uh, on his way here as well as we wait to hear from the NTSB at 1 o'clock. Of course, when it comes to transportation, shipping, so many things are interrupted by this uh, tragedy here this morning from the bridge that's uh, over uh, a mile and a half long and is a major throwaway for so many commuters here in the area. Again, we're waiting to hear. You saw the podium set up from the National Transportation Safety Board at 1 o'clock. Still waiting to hear from the White House as well. We're uh, expecting a response from President Biden. So some of those unanswered questions we have will hope to get answered uh, at 1 o'clock and then have some more updates for you guys. We'll be sure to bring that 1 o'clock press conference to you live right here on Fox 45 and online. Live for now, Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News. Maxine, thank you. State leaders responding to this morning's incident, including Governor Wes Moore. As Maxine said, the governor also issuing his statement saying, again, he has declared a state of emergency and is working with an interagency team to deploy federal resources as part of the response. The governor goes on to give his thanks to first responders involved in the ongoing rescue efforts and that he is, quote, praying for everyone's safety. U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg also releasing a statement on the Key Bridge collapse. You can see it right there. He offers his department's support to the local authorities and says, quote, I've spoken with Governor Moore and Mayor Scott to offer United States Secretary of Transportation support following the vessel strike and collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Rescue efforts remain underway and drivers in the Baltimore area should follow local responder guidance on detours and response. We're also getting a statement from the shipping giant that chartered the vessel. Maersk says, quote, we are horrified by what has happened in Baltimore and our thoughts are with all of those affected. The problem on these kinds of vessels, they are so huge that if you lose power, if you lose steerage, there is literally nothing you can do. I cannot recall of any precedent of where I've seen this happen before. I mean, this, this is really a unique event.
So here's what we've learned about this ship as we take a live look of what's left of it right there. We have learned that ship that struck the key bridge was the Singapore-based container ship. It's called the Dolly. It's nearly 1,000 feet long. Just imagine that. It arrived in Baltimore three days ago, according to VesselFinder.com. It left the port just after 1 o'clock this morning. 25 minutes later, at 125, marine traffic data shows that ship suddenly diverting from its straight course and began to slow down. It was around this time that there was video that showed all the lights on the exterior of the ship suddenly turn off and smoke began just billowing from the ship's funnel in the back. Well, the dolly then hit a portion of the bridge that was at 128, causing it to collapse. We're also hearing reports that the ship lost power before it crashed. The ship's lights reportedly flickered and it veered off course before it hit the bridge. Governor Moore says the ship issued a mayday before colliding into the bridge, and that call allowed authorities to stop incoming traffic. The ship also dropped its anchor prior to impact as part of its emergency procedures after losing propulsion. Again, all 22 crew members are safe and accounted for. All right, just into our newsroom, President Joe Biden stepping up to the podium to speak about the bridge collapse. Let's listen in. Struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware to our trainer by car. Been in Baltimore Harbor many times. And uh, the bridge collapsed, sending several people in the vehicles into the water, into the river. And uh, multiple U.S. Coast Guard units, which are stationed very nearby, thank God, were immediately deployed along with local emergency personnel. And the Coast Guard is leading the response to the port, where representatives from the Federal Highway Administration, the FBI, Department of Transportation, the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as Maryland officials in Baltimore Police and Fire, are all working together to coordinate an emergency response. Officials at the scene estimate eight people were unaccounted for still, not still, were unaccounted for. That number might change. Two have been rescued, one without injury, one in critical condition. And the search and rescue operations continue for all those remaining as we speak. I spoke with Governor Moore this morning, as well as the mayor of Baltimore, the county executive, United, to both the United States senators and the congressman. And my secretary of transportation is on the scene. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And I mean all the federal resources. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Everything so far indicates that this was a terrible accident. At this time, we have no other indication, no other reason to believe there's any intentional act here. Personnel on board the ship were able to alert the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of their vessel, as you all know and reported. As a result, local authorities were able to close the bridge to traffic before the bridge was struck, which undoubtedly saved lives. Our prayers are with everyone involved in this terrible accident and all the families, especially those waiting for the news of their loved one right now. I know every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. You just don't know. It's just terrible. We're incredibly grateful for the brave rescuers who immediately rushed to the scene and to the people of Baltimore who want to say, we're with you. We're going to stay with you as long as it takes. And like the governor said, you're Maryland tough, you're Baltimore strong, and we're going to get through this together. And I promise we're not leaving. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice. And we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year. And we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port. And we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, uh, well, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, 
I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland in whatever they ask for. We're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. Not leaving until then. So I just want to say God bless everybody who uh, got everyone harmed this morning and their families. And may God bless the first responders, many of whom risking their lives. And uh, I'm going to, the reason I'm not going to take a lot of questions, there's remaining issues that are open and we've got to determine what's going to happen in terms of the rescue mission and the like. But I'll. Do you, do you plan to go to Baltimore, sir? And if so, how quickly? I do, and as quickly as I can. That's what we're you said the federal government's also going to pay for the repairs. I'm just curious, this was a ship that appears to be at fault. Is there any reason to believe that the company behind the ship should be held responsible? And then also, you that mentioned. That could be, but we're not going to wait for that happen. We're going to pay for it to get the bridge rebuilt and opened. What did you make Mr. of Mr. Israel's decision not to attend this meeting this week? Oh, I don't want to get into that. We've got plenty of time to talk about it. You mentioned the port. Can I ask about the port? About the port. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, you are watching President Joe Biden leave a news conference on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The big news that he just announced right there is that the federal government, he wants the federal government to pay for the entire cost of repairing the bridge that you see right there collapsed into the Patapsco River there. And he is saying that he hopes that Congress backs him in that effort. The problem on these kinds of vessels, they are so huge that if you lose power, if you lose steerage, there is literally nothing you can do. I cannot recall of any precedent of where I've seen this happen before. I mean, this, this is really a unique event. With the bridge collapsing here this morning, blocking major shipping lanes and entry into the port of Baltimore. All eyes are on the future of shipping and what that might look like here and in neighboring ports as well. Absolutely. Joining us this morning, Katie, Kate Payne from JLL Research with how Baltimore Industries can expect to recover and how it is going to impact citizens. Thank you for joining us. First of all, just give us a quick overview of what this means for the industry at this point. Yeah, first and foremost, you know, our thoughts and prayers are go out to the family and friends impacted by this event. But the aftermath of this devastating, devastating event could linger for many years as it relates to supply chain issues. In the near term, as one of the nation's top ports, this will have a profound impact on the supply chain. Uh, Baltimore, the vessel traffic in and out of the port of Baltimore is currently suspended until further notice, as we know. And locally, this incident is likely to impact supply chains at all scales, from ships getting in and out of the port to the railways that connect to those ships to get um, to get materials right. out to uh, to the country, as well as the traffic, right, that um, is not going to be able to cross that bridge. So um, from deliveries to down to deliveries, you know, to your doorstep, you're likely to see um, impacts. Kate, we are looking live at that ship right there. We heard as many as 10,000 containers could be on that vessel right there. When we talk about what type of supplies normally go through the uh, port of Baltimore, as opposed to some of the larger ports like Norfolk or New yeah. York, what can we expect? What would be in some of those containers there? Absolutely. Well, Baltimore is actually the number one automobile port in the United States. So the port handled nearly 900,000 auto and light trucks last year more than any other U.S. port uh, for the 13th straight year. And so, uh, and the reason for that is because of Baltimore's strategic mid-Atlantic inland location, which is 150 miles further inland than any other port. So again, that connects to the Midwest um, much easier. So we're, of course, it's still unknown um, how this strategy will impact the auto industry and maybe those prices. But um, just given the port of Baltimore's prominence there, there's likely to be um, some issues there. But otherwise, a lot of things come in and out of the Port of Baltimore, be, whether it's uh, sugar, 
uh, automobiles or timber. Those are some of the things that we uh, that go in and out every day. Yeah, and when we talk about, you mentioned a little bit about how everyday Baltimoreans and others could see the impact of this. Do, how long do you anticipate the at-home impacts will last, given the, the length and the expansive recovery and sure. just cleanup effort that we are likely going to see here? It's hard to put a number to that. Um, I think that consumers should expect delays. Um, for an extended period of time, given the prominence of the Port of Baltimore and how much um, not only Baltimore, but the region and the nation relies on the Port of Baltimore, given its uh, significance. So, again, hard to say uh, and to put a number to it, but um, it will be significant. Kate, in, in, in times of tragedy, we often shed light on things that maybe weren't working correctly. Uh, we're not sure exactly what happened on that ship. We know that there right. was what appears to be a power outage in May Day. In terms of the future of shipping, does this change where we go from here and how things are, are moving through our waters? Sure. Again, hard to say and um, on, on what's more to come. And that is a great question. I think we're focusing now on the rescue efforts and um, th thinking about those families, but I'm sure that that is going to be on top of mind as the dust settles and we start to evaluate what has happened here. Well, Kate Payne with JLL Research, we appreciate you weighing in this morning. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. After the break, Fox 45 News continues to follow what you see right here. What is left of the Francis Scott Key Bridge now in the Patapsco River? The search and rescue mission underway for six who remain unaccounted for.